There are several steps to properly timing your ultra feed, and we want to guide you through each step so that you can be equipped to properly maintain your machine. The steps for timing the machine should be done in order, but if any of the sections are already correct on your machine, you can skip that step and proceed to the next one. Before starting the process of timing your machine, we recommend turning your worker bee off and unplugging it. Step one is to check the needle bar height. The needle bar height refers to how far down the needle goes into the hook mechanism, which will affect how the machine is able to create a stitch. First, ensure that the needle is installed properly with the butt of the needle all the way up and the scarf or carved out area is facing to the right as you look at it from the front of the machine. Then remove the left cover of the sewing machine. You will now see the needle bar, which is the bar that holds the needle. Manually lower the needle bar to its lowest position by turning the balance wheel towards you. You can verify that this is the lowest position because this dog bone piece will be parallel to the needle bar. We mark the proper height of the needle bar for your machine by putting a score line on the needle bar. Check to see if the mark just disappears under the top surface of the upper needle bar guide. If this mark is aligned properly, then the needle bar is set correctly and you can proceed to the next section. If this mark is not aligned, you will need to adjust the needle bar height. With the needle bar at its lowest position, unlock the needle bar from the drive collar by loosening the set screw. We're going to be using a 2 mm hex key to loosen this set screw. Reposition the needle bar up or down so that the score just disappears under the top surface of the upper needle bar guide. After making your adjustments, make sure that the screw that secures the needle is facing the inside of the sewing machine arm. Then tighten the drive collar set screw very tightly. You'll want to make sure that the needle is properly oriented after this adjustment. You can make this adjustment by loosening the set screw and adjusting the needle so that the scarf is facing the inside of the machine as you look at it from the front. The next step in this process is to check the rotational timing. When the bobbin, retaining ring cap spring, and the gib hook are removed, you can see the driver more clearly. The driver is what rotates the gib hook. To check the proper position of this rotation, reinstall the gib hook opposite the driver and turn the balance wheel so that the gib hook point is at its farthest position counterclockwise. Use your finger to push the gib hook counterclockwise to remove any gap between the bottom of the gib hook and the driver. Measure the distance between the gib hook point and the needle. When correctly positioned, the point should be between 1 8 inch and 3 16 inch counterclockwise of the needle. An easy visual for this correct positioning is that when you rotate the balance wheel, the gib hook should be just above the eye of the needle when they start to pass each other. If this is spaced properly, the driver is set correctly and you can skip to the next step. If this is incorrect, you'll have to adjust the driver. To change the rotational timing of the hook, the driver must be repositioned. The driver is secured to the lower shaft with two set screws. To adjust it, start by removing the gib hook and loosening these two screws with the two millimeter hex wrench. We recommend starting by loosening the top screw because it's harder to access, and then loosen the bottom screw and use it to gently twist the shuttle driver to the proper positioning. Then reinstall the gib hook and check proper positioning of the driver. Make sure that the needle is at its lowest position when you do so. Once you have the correct position, grab the lower shaft and push the driver and it together before tightening the set screws. After tightening the two screws, check once again that the driver is positioned properly. There should be practically no side-to-side -side play in the center shaft. But also know that if the shaft has no play at all, you may create a bind in the rotation of the shaft. So a touch of play is desired as seen here. Next, check the left-right positioning of the shuttle gib hook. If the shuttle assembly and the lower shaft have slipped right or left to the factory setting, the shuttle gib hook will not be in position to catch the thread loop. Before making any adjustments, make sure that you have your machine set to straight stitch and the needle is in the center position. Also, we recommend making a mark on the shuttle race guide shaft where the halves of the compressible clamp meet. If the shaft should accidentally rotate, realign the mark with the clamp guide. If you haven't already, install the gib hook and make sure that you have a size 20 needle installed. Then remove the needle plate in the feed dog. We have also removed the retaining ring to be able to see the timing more easily, but the gib hook will not be able to stay in place without lightly holding it, so we recommend doing so. Looking from the top down into the machine, slowly rotate the balance wheel. 
As the gip hook swings past the needle, the hook should be as close as possible to the right side of the needle without deflecting it. If the gap between the needle and the hook is too large, the hook must be moved to the left to close the gap. If the needle is being deflected by the hook, then the hook must be moved to the right. If the gib hook is in the proper position, you can skip the next step. To move the hook, slowly loosen the top screw on the compressible timing clamp in increments. Do so until light taps can move the shuttle assembly in either direction. Carefully move the assembly to position the hook as close to the needle as possible without deflecting it. With the clamp gap and the reference mark on the shuttle race guide shaft aligned, tighten the screw. Lastly, we're going to check the rotational positioning of the shuttle race guide shaft. To do so, start by making sure the needle plate, feed dog, bobbin case, and bobbin are removed. Replace the retaining ring if it isn't already installed. Then rotate the balance wheel until the needle enters the shuttle. If positioned properly, the needle is centered in the triangular opening of the retaining ring cap spring from front to back. If this is already properly adjusted, you have completed the timing of your machine. If this is not properly adjusted, you will need to adjust the rotational positioning of the shuttle race guide shaft. Minor adjustments can be made by loosening the two screws holding the cap spring in place and sliding the cap spring forward or back. When tightening these screws, make sure to hold it in place in the middle to avoid shifting as you tighten. If more adjustment is required, you'll need to adjust the rotational positioning of the shuttle race guide shaft. To adjust this position, rotate the balance wheel until the needle enters the shuttle. With your left hand, grab the shuttle and hold it in place to prevent left or right movement. With the other hand, loosen the clamp screw just enough that you can rotate the shuttle forward or back as necessary. Adjust the shuttle race guide shaft so that the needle is positioned correctly in the retaining ring cap spring. Once you've confirmed correct positioning, tighten the compressible timing clamp screw. After completing all the steps of timing your machine, we recommend rechecking each part to ensure nothing slipped in the process. If anything has, start at that step and retime from there. If each part is positioned correctly, you have fully timed your machine and you're ready to sew.